Hello, my dear friends. So we have learned basic things in Arduino in our previous videos, like what is digital sensors, how to interface them with Arduino, and what is analog sensor, how to interface them with Arduino. And we also seen a simple application out of it. We have seen one irrigation system using those digital and analog sensors together with Arduino. Now let us go to the next step. In this video, we will see how to upload this data, which is coming from either a digital or analog sensor to ThingSpeak server so that we can do Internet of Things. So it is not the only thing you can do about it. So this is only a starting point. So we are going to upload data to ThingSpeak. So with that data, we can do a lot of big works. OK, so let us begin with what we are going to do today. We are going to use DHT11, a sensor which can read temperature and humidity. Using the node MCU, we are going to write a code to obtain this data from this sensor. And then we are going to upload those data to the ThingSpeak server. OK, and I will also explain you what is this ThingSpeak server is all about, how to get access to this ThingSpeak server. OK, there are many features out of it. We can do a lot of things using this ThingSpeak server. It is free of cost. Of course, if you want to avail a lot of features of it, you may need to pay. But uh, for a beginner, it is very, very much enough to get the number of channels and the features available in it. Later, if you want to do a very big projects, we can go for a licensed one. OK, so let us start with. So this is the circuit which I am going to use it for today's uh, you know, work. So I put one node MCU Arduino here, just the inbuilt Wi-Fi module. And then it has also the digital and uh, analog pins for interfacing with the digital and analog sensors and transmitter receiver pins, obviously power supply pins and everything. And the other component which I am going to use is DHT11, as I told you a little earlier. So this sensor is going to read and give us the reading about temperature and humidity. So basically this sensor has two different components inside in it. So one is temperature measuring unit. OK, so mostly it will be of thermistor. And of negative coefficient type. OK, so the thermistor can read the temperature value and it can give you the resistance and then it will be calibrated. And you will get the output. And also it has the humidity part. Like a capacitor, it has uh, two plates sandwiched with a material which can absorb the humidity and vary the resistance. It's a very basic concept. The humidity increases so that the, you know, the dielectric property of it changes so that the resistance changes. So this resistance change can be measured and calibrated to get the humidity. OK, so we are not going into in depth about that working principle, but this is how it works. OK. And then. This. No, node MCU and. Uh, DHT 11 is connected in this way. We have a power supply positive, negative and. The output pin and this is a signal pin is connected to digital pin. 
of our node MC. Okay. So we have many uh, digital pins here. So I have connected to D0. Okay. And I am going to see uh, what how the code is being done. So before going to the code, let us go and see what is things speak. And then we will come back to this coding part. So if you Google it, you can get, so just Google it. Things speak. If you already aware of it, so no issues with that. If you do not know, you can just Google like this. You will get this page. So and if you are a new user, you can go to the you know, login page. Here, since I have already logged in, it is showing my login. So if I if I am a new person, it will ask my password and user name and password. Otherwise, to sign up, you can sign up this. OK, you can sign up with your credentials. It's a uh, hundred percentage free. OK, so there is nothing payment or anything like that. You can just you can give your uh, details and you can log in. Only two or three steps are there. You can easily log in this. Once you logged in, you will get a page like this. OK, so where I have four channels here, which I have created for different projects. Initially, you will not have any channels here. You can add channels here. OK, so you can add channels like my channel. You can press or you can create a new channel here. If you have already channels, you can go here. Otherwise, you can create a new channels. OK, if you are clicking this new channel, then it will ask the name of the channel and how many fields you need and all the details. Since I have created already four channels here, it won't allow me. So that is what I told you. If you want to get more channels for your project in future, you can go for the license licensed one so you can purchase it. OK, so up to four channels, you can go for it and each channel carries eight fields. So that means the eight variables can be uploaded. So you can see here. So eight field is available, so you can upload or you can view eight different parameters of the particular project. So suppose if you have uh, 30 or uh, 20 uh, sensor inputs or outputs, so you can go for second channel and third channel so that you can see all the data. Okay, so that's a, that's it about the channels. So once you created a channel, you can uh, give the name of that particular uh, you know data what you are going to obtain. Say for example, if I go to my channel, so I named it as weather station. So it is appearing on my chart. And I am going to use only two field. OK, so I am going to use only two fields so that it is showing only two fields. So you can see here I clicked only two field. So if I want to go for more number of data to be uploaded, I can increase this number of fields. And then I can give save channel. OK, so since I have only two variables, so I have selected only two fields. So that two fields data is getting uploaded here. And for uploading the data to the ThingSpeak server, we need an important parameter here in the API keys. So you can see here API key for writing as well as for reading. So writing in the sense it is the data coming from your Arduino or your Node MCU to the ThingSpeak server. It is writing to the ThingSpeak server. So the written data can be read also. OK, so you can read the data to another Arduino. Or to the same Arduino also. So if you want to read the values, you can use this read API keys. If you want to write the data, you can use this write API key. So you can you have to copy this and you have to place it in our program. So just I am telling you what is this API key. OK, so this is about the API key and then in the view we can have a lot of widgets. So this is a graph and I can put it in a numerical way or uh, 
I can put it like a gauge. OK, so you can see the there is a visualizations, add visualization. So you can create as a graph. OK, so like this graphs you can create or you can create as a widgets like a gauge numerical display. If it is a digital output, you can show is it is on or off. OK, this kind of things we can do in this options. There are many options available. Export a recent data. So if by clicking this, you will get the data. Whatever you are uh, data of entry is happening here. That data can be put it in the Excel sheet. Say, for example, if I want to get the data of it, export recent data. So it is going to ask me what format I need. So I shall give it as a CSV. It is almost like our Excel format. So it will give like this. <coughs> OK, so I get the value like this. Okay, so the parameters for field two and field three, I get the value like this. OK, so using this data, I can do any any sort of calculations or uh, you know any comparisons, whatever we need, we can do out of it. So we are just going behind the big data and uh, so on and so on so kind of things like uh, artificial intelligence we can use. Uh, using these data, so we can give some, you know, um, uh, you can guess or you can like statistics tools. You can use these data, and then you can predict the event, what will happen uh, in the future. No, this is only whether you can use any data like sales data or uh, any any realistic data. So you can use and you can judge like electrical power consumption or power factor changes. Like that, we can use different uh, parameters so that uh, you can judge what will happen in the morning time, how much load will be there, afternoon, how much load will be there, evening, how much load will be there. Or uh, you can say, mm, you know, uh, number of people visiting to the uh, particular shop or number of product sold in that particular month. So many, many things you can do out of the data. Okay, so this is only a tool for collecting and uploading in the things speak and then by having this data with you you can control from here okay you can control from anywhere from the world so using this data you can write you know from the things speak you can write uh, you know to the art you know to control uh, a motor or to control a particular device so that it can turn on or can turn off and you can view this data from anywhere in the world so that is the advantage of using the uh, IoT kind of things. OK, so most probably you might be coming across these data or these kind of things now. So I just want to give a simple uh, you know, way to get into it if you are a new person to it. That's why I'm explaining this much. Right, so this is about the things speak. Uh, so now let us go back to our uh, presentation. So let us go to the code. So though it is looking like a big code, it is not, but it is very simple one. I will break it down for you in an easier way. OK, so first we need to add some header files. Header files for uh, our you know, uh, Arduino Wi-Fi module as well as for the ThingSpeak server. So I need to include a header file. Also, I need to include a header file for the DHT11. So there are uh, ladder files available in the Google. Okay, we can get those uh, header files, and uh, I have used one header file from the Google only. I am not creating header files. Okay, so this header file will have its own, uh, you know, subcode inside it. Okay, so mostly you, you might be knowing what is header code, header files. So by first we will include these header files for the Wi-Fi module and this thing speak everything. Then we need to give this password and uh, um, SSID of your Wi-Fi network. So if you are using your uh, mobile as a you know, uh, Wi-Fi modem, you can give uh, in your mobile itself, you can get it like a tethering. Okay, so you can get the password and the mobile name and you can give here. Okay, so I have given uh, NL110 project as my SSID. So this is your router name or whatever it is. And then password, this is my password. So this password and uh, SSID will change for your 
network. And then, so we have included the DHT11 using this, you know, header files. Then we are going for, these are the uh, things which you need to add it. So no, nothing to change about it, nothing to uh, worry about this. So only uh, I will explain you which are the things you need to change. So here you need to include your channel number. So where you will get this channel number, you will get the channel number from your ThingSpeak server. So here you can see this is your channel number. Okay. So once you created a channel, so in the channel, in the top, you can see the channel number. So you can copy this channel number and you can place the channel number here. Sorry. Yeah, you can create the channel number here and then you have to write the API code. As I told you a little earlier, so the API code also is available here in the channel. So this is the right API key. So I will just copy this one and I can place it over there. Okay, so once I have the API key and everything, so these are the initial setups what I can do. And then later in the setup point, so I need to begin a serial port communication, okay? And then I just give a delay of 10 millisecond, microseconds. And then, sorry, this is milliseconds, 10, 10 milliseconds. And uh, we have to set up the THT uh, 11, that RT, this one. So the pin number where I am connecting the DHT 11, that pin number I am writing here. So it is a 16th pin. So I am connecting the 16th number here. So you can see here it is mentioned 16. Okay, GPIO 16. So I just mentioned here and Wi-Fi dot begin. So SSID and password already be declared here. So those will come here. Okay, things pick dot begin client. So we are just beginning up the process. Serial port begin and then DHT 11 we are setting up and then Wi-Fi we are beginning up and then things fix also now we begin. So these are the initial setup uh, work. Then here becomes the loop. So first we need to get the data for the from the DHT 11. Okay. So so these are the you know standard uh, way of getting the DHT 11 data. So if you have uh, other uh, you know um, uh, header file maybe you will have a different uh, code here so maybe these two lines may change with respect to the header file okay so this header file as this template so this is the same uh, pattern you can follow with this uh, header file so if you not follow this then it will say uh, it is an error okay so first what i'm get doing dht dot get minimum sampling period of so inside this period of is a function so inside there will be a a return function inside this header file okay by using that function it is going to create a sampling period and then it will going to get the data for humidity dht dot get humidity of so get humidity of is a function so it is going to get the humidity and it is going to store here in this variable called int humidity once i get the data i am going to print it in the serial port and then yeah, so serial code, I am going to print it. In similar way, I am going to get the temperature. Hint temperature is equals to DHT dot get temperature of. So this is the function for getting the temperature from the DHT level. So this function is going to write the value for temperature. So I know now the temperature and humidity. So I need to write these two values in the things. Way. So this is the template. Uh, this is the syntax I can say. Things speak dot write field then you have open curly braces my channel number comma so since i am going to write in the channel number two i am writing here too if you, if you are writing in channel number five you can write number five what variable you are going to write here so this is the variable which i am going to write so humidity so humidity comma my write api key so this api key already we declared here so that it will come inside here so no issue with that okay and delay some hundred milliseconds of delay 
and then again same way for the next data things big dot right field my channel number comma third channel now and i am going to write temperature as the variable so uh, api key is going to be the same delay finish so this is the code for getting the data and then uploading into things big very simple code so there is nothing uh, complexity in this so some of the lines are standard syntax so nothing to change only few things we need to change so that is your ssid password channel number api key and what variable you are getting from so that number name you have to declare and we have to get it suppose if i want to get a potentiometer okay i want to get one ldr or potentiometer so this much lines won't be there i can write a simple line okay analog read of potentiometer is equals to some uh, sensor value or something like that and then the sensor value can be printed here easily okay so since it is a uh, immunity and uh, this one so it has a standard syntax so that's why it is uh, looking like this so in this also these two lines are for printing the data in the serial port again these two also in the printing the data in serial port if you don't want to see that values in the serial port you we can switch, skip this two lines and these two lines four lines can be skipped so the program will be very small okay so this is the code breakup so now let us see how it functions in the code so that the same program i just copied here okay so the same thing this is the code and uh, i have connected it already here very simple connection so this is my node mcu and then i have a dht11 so in this dht11 three pins are there so as i told you one is a signal pin that is output pin the center one is a supply positive and the last one is a ground so here i have connected it to the d0 pin and these two are supply plus and minus so this is connected to computer usb port so once you have programmed it you need not to connect it to the computer also you can connect it to one a small mobile charger that is more than enough it will keep uploading the data since i want to see the data in the things speak uh, sorry in the uh, you know in the screen so i just keep it in the computer itself usb port so now you can see in the screen so our, what is the data is uploading so the data is getting from the temperature and humidity from this dht11 and it is getting displayed here so humidity is 34 temperature is 27 here in my room okay so this data is getting updated in the thingspeak server as well you can see 34 and 27 just remember let us see here yeah so it's here you can see here yeah it is 34 and near to 27 or 28 25 or 26 yeah 27 exactly so the data you can see the time it's exactly 12.4 here. So you can see 12.4 and then here 12.4 as well. Okay, so very simple one. So you can easily upload the data to the thing speak. So this is the first step to the IoT. Then you, you can using this, you can develop your own applications and then you can uh, do a lot of magics in the field of Internet of Things. Hope things are clear. I will uh, post put this uh, you know, code and everything in the chat box. Okay, I will give the link for this so we can uh, try by yourself. So these Node MCUs are available very much available in the Amazon or whatever the you know online method you are having. You can purchase this and see there is nothing here. Only um, one Node MCU and one temperature so you know dht11 sensor very easy to connect and you can check the output so once you get some success in some uh, some of the coding methods then you can go for the other components as well 
uh, any doubts if you have please let me know in the comment box and uh, keep in contact with this channel so that you can get more and more of uh, arduino related programmings and uh, hopefully you will get uh, a yeah, very good project uh, very soon so it is on the way so actually this uh, this particular video i made it because if you want to understand that uh, project you need to know all the basics about uh, uploading the data to the ThinkSpeak and everything. So everything I don't want to put in the same video to mess it up. So I want to break it down. So I just put this video earlier so that the next video you can easily understand. And uh, that will be application oriented, uh, uh, this one. And also it is a ThinkSpeak related thing. So hope uh, you will enjoy this video as well as uh, I hope you will enjoy that the future videos as well. Keep in contact. Thank you.